Hello everyone. This is Radiograph 5 for the Summer Panoramic Interpretation course at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. In this video, we are going to discuss one panoramic radiograph of a patient who was diagnosed with Gorlin syndrome. Some of you may not know, Dr. Gorlin was a professor at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. Before I go into describing the radiograph, let me introduce you to Dr. Gorlin, one of the giants in dentistry. My lab was on the 16th floor, a few doors from Dr. Gorlin's office. He used to visit my lab a few times every day for a few minutes. A very kind man. This is one day in 2004 when I got the chance to stand with him for this picture. Someday, when you get a chance, come to 16th floor, Gorlin conference room, and read about him on the walls. Dr. Gorlin passed away in 2006. So, on this panoramic radiograph, we see multiple cystic lesions. When histopathological examinations were done later, all these lesions were proven to be odontogenic keratocysts. Let's start with the maxillary right posterior region. This third molar is superiorly displaced. There is a radiolucency in the area of this third molar. We'll be using a CBCT scan to evaluate this area better. We can also see a radiolucency extending from the right first premolar to almost to the area of the lateral incisor. The root of the canine and the lateral incisor are separated. This lesion appears to be in contact with the floor of the nasal fossa. The left third molar is impacted. On this panoramic radiograph, we really don't see any lesion. The mandibular left third molar is horizontally impacted. The follicle looks normal. On the right side, we have a scalloped lesion extending from the area of the first molar all the way to the mid ramus. Earlier, on a peripical interpretation video, we had learned that odontogenic keratocysts are often tunnel-shaped running along the length of the bone. Let's review the CBCT scan and we'll spend some time with the maxillary left third molar area. There is a large odontogenic keratocyst with this left third molar. This was not visible on the panoramic radiograph. Therefore, in complex cases like this, a CBCT scan is important in addition to the panoramic radiograph. So let's go to the CBCT scan. I'm using on-demand 3D software. This blue vertical line represents the image on this screen. So I'm on the distal aspect of the maxillary right third molar and you can see that here is the odontogenic keratocyst. I'm going to scroll through this very slowly. So we'll be spending a lot of time on this scan. So I'm coming mesially and this is the third molar and you can see that this is the odontogenic keratocyst. The third molar crown is superior to the root of the second molar. And here is the odontogenic keratocyst extending into the maxillary sinus. Coming mesially, I'm almost in the area of the canine. And here is the other odontogenic keratocyst. This is seen here. So you can see that this is more elongated but not expanding the buccal or the palatal cortical plates. And this is one reason that an odontogenic keratocyst can become fairly large before it's detected clinically. So coming mesially, we are almost in the area of the central incisor. Now we are on the left side and we are still seeing this lesion. We have reached the premolar region and we are in the first molar area, maxillary left first molar. And this is the evidence of the odontogenic keratocyst that we did not see on the panoramic radiograph. Further distally, we are picking up the third molar and here is the odontogenic keratocyst extending into the maxillary sinus that we completely missed on the panoramic radiograph. So the third molar is impacted, palatally oriented. The root of the third molar is in contact with the buccal cortical plate. And this is the long odontogenic keratocyst without much expansion on the buccal or on the lingual, although this is elongated. So that's the odontogenic keratocyst. I'm going to move to the mandibular region. 
So this is the mandibular third molar and this area is normal. We are coming towards the anterior teeth. I'll scroll here a little faster because the other lesion is in the mandibular right third molar area. So that's the mental foramen on the right side. We're reaching the molar, first molar, and here is the odontogenic keratocyst. That's the buccal cortical plate and this is the lingual cortical plate. See for the size of this lesion, the cortical plates are not expanded. So that's the tunnel shaped lesion. Going further distally, I'm in the second molar area. And then that's the third molar. Again, it's a long cystic lesion. This is the inferior alveolar canal. There's no expansion out of the buccal or the lingual cortical plate. Further distally, this is in the ramus. And again, we see the lesion is here. Vertically long, buccally to lingually, there's not much of an expansion. Let's go back to our panoramic radiograph. So we had seen this lesion on the panoramic radiograph. We had seen this on the panoramic radiograph. We appreciated the expansion of the cortical plates or lack of that on the CBCT scan. This large odontogenic keratocyst, which is associated with maxillary left third molar, is still not visible on this panoramic radiograph. And then we saw this elongated tunnel-shaped radiolucency with some scalloping. So multiple odontogenic keratocyst, one, two, three, four, and there may be some smaller ones in these areas. Gorlin syndrome has several names. Other than Gorlin syndrome, it's also known as gorlin gore syndrome. It's also known as basal cell nevus syndrome. Another name is nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Gorlin syndrome can start early in life after five years of age. The patient will have multiple odontogenic keratocysts. These keratocysts have higher recurrence rate than solitary odontogenic keratocyst without being Gorlin syndrome. The patient will have basal cell cancer. And there may be several other bony findings. The most common is the bifid rib. So what are the radiographic features? Obviously, a patient with Gorlin syndrome will have multiple odontogenic keratocysts in both the jaws. These keratocysts have the same radiographic features as a solitary odontogenic keratocyst. The features will be well-defined corticated radiolucency running along the length of the bone. The lesion will have scalloped border. These lesions can be very small only a few millimeters or can be several centimeters in size. On a craniofacial image, you may also see calcification of the Fox cerebri. The most common condition that can be confused with Gorlin syndrome are multiple dentigerous cysts associated with several impacted teeth. Cherubism and multiple myeloma have multiple radiolucencies, but these are usually not confused with Gorlin syndrome. As we have seen in our panoramic radiograph, the maxillary left molar area cyst was not visible on the pan. Therefore, to understand the number of the lesions, extent of the lesions, and involvement of the adjoining structures, a CBCT or CT should be obtained. Odontogenic keratosis can have high recurrence rate. Since Gorlin syndrome cysts have even a higher recurrence rate, the surgical treatment is usually very aggressive. To rule out recurrence, Please continue to image the patient. Some patients may also require genetic analysis. For further studies, I recommend that you read directly from Dr. Garlin. This paper was published in 1987 in the journal Medicine. Let's stop here about Garlin syndrome. Khaili Mamnoon, Mercy, thank you. Please come back again for another interpretation video. See you soon.